All right, game seven. Jumping in the pool. And I have been asked what I'm going to do if uh, I lose a game. <laughs> and I'll analyze it just the same as any other game. All right, let's go with knight f3 this time. And you know what? I'm feeling like we should go with some sort of... Oh, let's do a king's ending attack. Except I'm going to go c3 because he's letting me. Huh. Okay. This doesn't seem right for him. Something already feels off. Squares. Squares. Hmm. I'm just doing this to see if I can't get away with something. Is he letting me get away with something? Knight f6 check, pawn takes, pawn takes, knight f5, queen. Okay, let's be aggressive and see what happens. Okay. Pawn takes, pawn takes. Knight f6 check, pawn takes, pawn takes. I'm going with it because it looks looks good. Huh. Well, I got something in my attack. And let's just grab there because that seems pretty easy. Give me a woman. Undermine the world. Oh, I could have grabbed the bishop there. Yeah, that was that was bad. Ninety seven. All right, so threatening bishop takes h6. Still threatening bishop takes h6 stuff. Yeah, <laughs> when you like miss just taking taking the free ones, but your opponent gives you a free one anyway. All right. So we'll leave the bouncing bar of fate on. I felt like a king's Indian attack, and you know, most people get into the dogmatic habit when they have their specific opening to just be like, okay, I know I'm supposed to play d3, I know I'm supposed to play knight, knight bd2, but honestly, it was unnecessary here because again, I can just get a big center, and this is like a Alpen king's Indian attack type hybrid, and I know I'm going to get a lot of key squares. C4 is an absolute no-no. If you're a Sicilian player, you should know to take on D4 because you have to fight for the center. The entire concept is a flanking opening idea. So after C4, <clears throat> I get a tempo, I get another tempo, and now I'm going to have key squares to work with around the king. So I just finish my development. Stop counterplay over there. That's probably a move that's unnecessary. When I go knight e4, he's got to defend d6. And I mean, I thought about playing knight d6 immediately, but then I'm like, okay, rook d1. And I just wanted to see what he would do here, because if h6, I still have queen h5. And then, okay, I found the right move. Found the right move. <laughs> I did not find the right move on this next one. I take the queen, and I just take the bishop. Just take the bishop and the guy can resign. But I played d5 because I was focusing on trying to undermine the knight. But then, you know, you got to focus on your opponent's counterplay. It's one of those things, like a common psychological mistake. When when you have a win in hand and you have a huge advantage, it's, it's really hard to stay principled and play the best move every time. But clearly this is, this is crushing. And then he walked into the mate. You got to play like knight f5 or something. So... There's another one.